Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to make decorative pillow shams using a decor and upholstery fabric from SailRight. This is an envelope style pillow form which makes it easy to sew and easy to insert your pillow into the case. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. In this first chapter, we'll be measuring and cutting the plates. We're going to measure the pillow. Uh, we're going to measure it from the seam here and come around the pillow to the seam on this side. And we get 27 and a half inches here. Then we're going to measure the height and this is about the middle position and we're going to come around to this side which is the middle position here of 18 and a half inches we're making two pillow shams and each pillow sham requires a top plate and a bottom plate we've already measured the pillow and our pillow is 27 and a half by 18 and a half inches so here's a look ahead at the finished pillow sham and if you look on the back side there's an opening here and that's called an envelope style pillow sham. Now, because of that, the back plate needs to be longer in length to accommodate for this envelope. So what we want to do is we want to take the measurement we took of the pillow plus six inches for this envelope and one inch for seam allowance for the length. And for the height, it needs to be the measurement that we took of the pillow plus one inch for seam allowance. Now the front side of the pillow has no pocket, so this plate needs to be the length of the pillow plus one inch for seam allowance and the height of the pillow we just measured plus one inch for seam allowance. Here are the measurements for the bottom plate and the top plate for each pillow sham. This is the outside surface of our fabric, but the pattern is very hard to get it to lay straight and put straight lines on it. So what I've done is I've turned it so the right side is down and on the back side you can see the manufacturer has made it easy for us by putting um, lines on the fabric so I know that it'll be straight based on the blue lines and the white lines. So I'm going to measure out my back plate uh, using these lines to keep the fabric pattern straight. I'm going to put the Serite tempered cutting glass for hot knife under here. We've determined that this blue line is our reference for uh, the height of our pillow. And I'm going to use a hot knife to cut this uh, synthetic fabric. Why use a hot knife? Well, it helps to prevent the edges of the fabric from raveling. And uh, that just makes for a nicer pillow. In this chapter, we'll show you how to create the envelope opening on the back plate. Now, since we have a really nice pattern on the wrong side of the fabric I'm going to flip these around and this is our our uh, length I want to cut that in half so there's the center and I'm going to use these lines as a reference to how to cut it straight so we only want to do this with the uh, back plates so there's my mark to cut it in half and again I'm using the serrated edge hot knife this is the cordless version of the hot knife we also have a corded version it's a little bit less expensive they both work great but I love this one because I'm not tethered by an electrical cord. And I'm also using the, uh, the uh, uh, tempered cutting glass for hot knife on the back side to prevent any kind of damage to our tabletop and also to make the cut super fast because it glides nicely and it transfers all the heat to the, nut, to the fabric. Okay, so here's where we just slit the fabric. Make sure you do it on the ends that you slit. We're gonna strike a line that's one inch from the cut edge that we just made, which is basically right here, because I already have that white line there, so I don't have to strike a line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put double-sided tape. Now I have to be careful about where I put the double-sided tape, because they're sewing a really light fabric. Um, you could, I'm, gonna sew, I'm gonna put it um, so that it's right in the middle, so it is not gonna be in my uh, stitch line, because sometimes on light fabrics, when you're sewing with light uh, thread, and a small needle, you can gum up the needle pretty bad, and then you can get skip stitches with the double-sided tape because it can be gummy. On heavier fabrics, it's usually not a problem. So I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper, and I'm gonna fold this 
to that white line. Now notice the double-sided tape is kind of in, uh, in the middle of my fold. And that way, uh, when I sew here, I won't be sewing through the glue. And we're going to do that on the second panel as well as this, this one on that cut edge. I've set the stitch length to about three and a half to four millimeters and we're going to sew a straight stitch. So here's our hem and I like to sew with the uh, decorative side up so that I can make sure that the stitch looks good. And I'm going to sew very close uh, to the folded edge here with a straight stitch. Reversing here at the beginning a little bit. And then just sewing down the side. And I'm using the center foot edge as a guide to keep that stitch at the right spot. And I'll do that to this side of the back panel or back plate. And I'll do it to the second side of the back plate. Now we're only going to sew one of these pillows together even though I have to make two. Process will obviously be the same for the second one. Next up, we'll sew the bottom and top plates together. This is our front plate and we have uh, the back plate cut in two. We want outside surfaces to face each other and we want the hem to be in the middle position. So we're gonna position this one very close to that edge and then this one is gonna go with the hem. This is the hem here. This one's gonna go with the hem like this. And we're gonna sew around the perimeter. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin these together so that I don't get any movement as I sew it around the perimeter. So I'm going to pin it so that my uh, pin goes through, but not all the way to the edge of the fabric because I'm probably going to use a magnetic guide. So my pin stops short of that edge. And I'll probably place a pin about every 8 to uh, 12 inches apart from each other just to keep that fabric lined up all around the perimeter. So here's where it overlaps, and it's important to put a pin really close to that uh, overlap section. So I'm going to put a pin here and I'm going to put a pin here. That just keeps everything down nice and flat. And so we have it pinned all around the perimeter and it's, and it's flat. I don't see any bubbles or anything like that. It doesn't matter if the edges aren't perfect. They just have to be really close. Uh, we did a pretty good job cutting this out so it looks good. So I'm going to put my deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide on the half inch mark of the needle plate which is basically half inch from the needle. Now the needle's to the left uh, as I uh, sewed that hem, so I'm gonna move the needle in the center position. Now it's a true half inch from the edge. And what I'll do is I'll start sewing uh, from one of these corners. It doesn't really matter where you start, but uh, I like to start at a corner and about a half inch down from that corner. And we will uh, start by creating a little bit of a reverse like that, and then just line up the fabric as we sew to the magnetic guide and sew around the perimeter. So this is a half inch from the edge. Now if you sew through one of the uh, pins, it's not a big deal. Or you can pull the pins as you go if you'd like. When I get to the corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sewing about a half inch from the edge of the material, which is right about there. Needle's buried. I'm going to lift my presser foot, roll on the buried needle, and then lower my presser foot and sew down this side. And we will sew all the way around the perimeter of the pillow doing this. So here we're coming back to the beginning of that corner and we'll just do some reversing there as well. There we go. Next up, inserting the pillow form. We'll just pull the pins out now and we will turn the pillow right side out. Just grab it from the inside and start turning it right side out. Put your fingers inside and push each one of the corners out by pushing one finger into the corner. So now we'll take the pillow, open up the envelope portion, and this will be a fairly tight fit because we made it a fairly uh, tight pillow cover, but I think it looks better that way. So I'm going to shove it all into the bottom. And then once it's in the bottom, we can stuff it down and 
put it into the top portion. And then just work it into the corners. And there we go. There is our envelope pillow sham in whatever fabric you want. You can get your fabrics at sayright.com. There's the back side of the pillow. Coming up next, a list of the materials and tools we use to make these envelope style pillow shams. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email. We're glad to help. From all of us here at Sailrite, I'm Seth Grant. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series.